Pamela Wells disappeared. And cops here in the city of Detroit have been working to connect the dots ever since. Why did Tamela vanish? Who is responsible? Well, I confronted one person in particular, and the police have too. Hi, how are you? My name is Andrea Isom. I'm a Crime Watch Daily. And Mr. Tennant, yeah. we really need your help, sir. Really, really bad. We, we are working on the case of Tamela Wells. We were trying to find out, is there any information you can give us to help the family and try to help police steer well, them in the I right direction? Well. His name is Ricky Tennant. I've been trying to help all I can, you know? What you want me to do? Tamela Wells knew him as her boyfriend. The Detroit couple had a baby girl together who is now 10 years old and living with her dad. Tennant has never been arrested or charged with any crime in connection to Tamela's disappearance. And he actually seemed eager to talk about a cloud of suspicion that hangs heavy over him. Tell me about that day, Ricky. Even allowing us into the home he shared with Tamela. What do you want to say to people who are pointing the finger, who have pointed the finger at you? What do you want to say to them? They can kiss my ass, okay? Because I ain't did to nobody. Ricky and Tamala's twisted tales of denials and mystery all started on an early August morning with a phone call to Florida. Answer the phone. I can hear the screeching, scary voice of a little girl saying, Grandma, my mommy didn't come home last night. Tamala's mom, Donna Wells, receives a frantic call from her then six-year-old granddaughter, Navaya. I started calling Tamala, but she never answered. The next day, it just went directly to the voicemail. Back in Detroit, many days later, cops received a call, too, from Ricky Tennant. He reported the vehicle gone, and then he found it himself. And before calling us... He reports that his girlfriend, Tamala, is missing, telling police the last time he saw her, she was driving his car on the way to hang out with friends. A few days later, with no sign of Tamala, Tennant claims he heard from a friend named Bud, who apparently spotted the car, abandoned and parked across town. When you went to the car, Ricky, what did you see in the car that, that looked like Tamala may have been there? What did you see? Well, I, I know I had a jack and a basketball in the trunk, mm -hmm. and it wasn't in there. Okay. I had that in the trunk. It wasn't in there. And I called my sister up and somebody up, and I called the police up because I didn't want to mess with the car. But detectives say Tennant did mess with the car, so much so that any potential evidence was wiped out. Instead of calling us to come to the scene to investigate, Mr. Tennant took it upon himself to go inside the vehicle, to search the vehicle. Then that's when he called us. And that was very odd and disturbing to me. Donna found other actions odd and disturbing. She was not able to get Tennant on the phone for six days after her daughter went missing. Frantic, she flew to Detroit in a desperate search for Tamala. Tell me some of the places that you can't believe you even looked to try to find her. First of all, the morgue. The worst devastating thing in the world. It's to have to go to a morgue. That ain't where I want to find my child. It hurt to go to places that I don't ever would have ever imagined myself being in. I'm talking about neighborhoods I would never imagine myself being in. Banded houses, jumping over in garbage dumps, going over in vacant buildings. Was Mr. Tennant ever considered a suspect? Yes. Everything leads us back to Mr. Tennant in some kind of way. That's not something that normally happens, but in this case, it is. Cops bring Ricky in for questioning, and he agrees to a polygraph test, which detectives say he flunked. The lie detector tests. The polygraphs well, that I you failed. failed. Okay, I, okay, How I failed. How did you fail them? How did I fail Yes. Them? Probably because I'm mad inside of, inside about all the things I'm hearing about she done did. But if I knew if I did some wrong or whatnot, I wouldn't have done the lie detector test. But I know I ain't did s to nobody. Tennant claims he only took one polygraph test. Well, Sergeant Marcellus Ball says he took two and failed them both. He got so agitated to the point where we thought that he was going to attack the polygraph examiner. That's not the behavior of someone who's innocent. And what about six-year-old Navaya? What does she know? 
The young girl is brought in for questioning, a sensitive and delicate process that's recorded on video without a parent present. Novaya was distant. She didn't appear to want to be there. She was vague with her answers. Did it ever appear to you that she may have been coached? Well, prior to the interview, Mr. Tennant was advised to not come to the interview, don't bring her to the interview. Mr. Tennant violated that. So in essence, he did have contact with her prior to the interview? Yes, he did. And that led me to believe that, yes, Navai had been coached and she had been told what to say and what not to say. As the mystery deepens, with murky details and few leads, the case goes as cold as a Detroit winter. Why is he not in police custody? Why was he not arrested? I'm sure those are questions people would want to ask. We're still investigating. Um, just because you believe something is to be true, you have to prove it beyond a reasonable doubt. And right now, we can't do that. And now, Donna Wells and Ricky Tennant are locked in a bitter battle over the truth behind Tamala's whereabouts. There is a young lady missing. It is time to stop playing games, quit holding secrets. I don't care what they know. I just want them to know the truth so that they can find the truth. For this grieving mother, Tamala's disappearance is a horrific nightmare, which she says never ends. It's nights that I go to sleep and I cry so much that I don't even know I'm crying in my sleep. And to this day, four years since her beloved daughter vanished, Donna refuses to give up. Somebody somewhere knows something in this city. She continues to canvass the area, handing out flyers, anything to find her daughter. Friends and family doubt Ricky has been trying to help after he told local reporters that with Tamala out of the picture, he has one less headache. You said at one point you had two headaches, your daughter and Tamala, and now you only have one headache, which is your daughter. What do you want to say to that? I don't wish she was gone because I didn't have nothing to do with it and don't know nothing about it. You didn't really mean to say, now I have one less headache. No, not really, well, because really, yeah, she was giving me headaches all the time, but I didn't mean it like, and despite I wish something happened to her or something like that. Ricky does, however, have a message for his missing girlfriend. Family, if you out there, would you please come home? I want you to see your daughter, Navaya. She's 10 years old, going on 11. Would you please come home if you're out there? And for people who say, I don't know, Ricky, maybe it's you that did something, you say what to them? Whoever trying to put this on me, y'all on a bunch of crap because Ricky ain't did nothing. Tamala Wells has never been found. How she disappeared, never answered. Cops continue to look for clues and need your help. And a grieving mother does too. What do you want to say to him? I just pray that you find it in your heart to step up and just come clean. My ultimate goal here is to find my baby. I don't know what your ultimate goal is.